All right, everybody. I thought I would just do a little update um, while I'm waiting for the product to come, the Duraback 18 to finish the uh, exterior here. I thought I would move on the interior and uh, start doing some stuff. So let me just show you guys where I'm at here. Uh, this is wide angle. I mean, I'll, I'll uh, show you what it would look like. You guys can see wide angle is going to give us a little bit better view here. Uh, but let me explain uh, uh, what I've done the last couple days in here. All right. So let's talk about what the uh, roof insulation will be. Um, so you guys can see the two inch EPS. Uh, that's all in place. Uh, I talked about this before, but it's essentially uh, a, uh, this portion of the beam here actually extends out and this EPS is... Uh, well, I'll talk about that. That's a, that was a little exception there, but it actually sits in here, sits up here. And then when I attached the uh, the skin of the roof on the top, it actually sandwiched it in there. And then, of course, I used uh, my uh, what's turning out to be one of my favorite glues here, this great stuff, uh, uh, construction adhesive. And uh, uh, I'll talk about this in a second, but when I cut out the uh, hole for the vent fan, I mean, this stuff is, I mean, I, I tried to pry it off. It wouldn't even come off. But when this stuff bonds to that uh, quarter inch roof material, it makes, uh, you know, an extremely strong composite structure. But that's not all for the insulation. So the rated insulation for the two inch XPS is 10, R value of 10. That's what they claim. Um, and then you guys can see right here, I'll talk about the wiring in a second, but you could see, you know, there's a, it's about an inch and a quarter gap right there. Uh, what I already cut the material here, so we've got a combination of uh, uh, half inch um, cedar, oopsies, and I cut some strips of some uh, leftover quarter inch ply. And what I will do, I want to get the wiring in before I did this, but I will actually take those pieces and attach them here, all the way across there and down there for all of the columns going across. So, in, so I'm considering the column really kind of a, a multi-angular piece there because it's a 45 up, the long uh, flat portion there, and then the back down. So when I attach those ribs in there, and I'll show you guys in other videos, it'll make probably a little bit more sense, but what that will do is that will build up the thickness of this to where I have a to another two inches of thickness. And then uh, ultimately, uh, I will put two inches of EPS insulation. Hold on a second. Ugh, there we go. There we go. Sorry about that. So that will sit in there. So you guys can see this gap right here will be closed up by material that I attach underneath here. That you can see that right there. So that will leave a roof with a uh, combined thickness of four inches of two different types of foam board. And um, the rationale between the two types is, uh, I think the XPS, since I'm forming it as a composite structure with the roof, adds for the strength. The EPS doesn't quite have that uh, strength potential, um, but I actually really like EPS. I can't really describe it, but I just like the performance of the insulation. Um, I also like the fact that it has this uh, reflective uh, portion there. Um, most of these cosmetic surfaces on the interior will be wrapped in fabric, which is something I've done on, on pretty much all of my campers, except for I think the very first one. Um, there's a lot of debate and talk about how effective these reflective barriers are in terms of uh, radiant energy. Some it, it seems like it's pretty commonly stated they need an air gap. Um, when I wrap it in fabric though, I don't know if I'm disrupting that or not, but at the end of the day, I don't really care. I just anecdotally, um, I just really like the performance of EPS. There's a lot of things I like about it. Um, so ultimately that's why I'm choosing it. And it's also, it also happens to be less expensive too. So that's, that's real nice. But anyways, back to this. So we got two inches, uh, XPS. We'll have two inches of EPS from, for a cosmetic surface. It'll be wrapped uh, in uh, fabric like I've done on uh, most of my campers. Um, and then because this portion here will be a little bit wider down, uh, it will be, when the EPS is in there, it will be flush across here. 
and then there will be a trim piece that goes, which is going to help. The, the glue should be enough to hold everything together, but uh, that little trim piece will form a decorative edge across the seam. It'll be a mechanical way of holding everything up. And then also, um, as you guys can see right here, uh, you know, we'll have some lights up here and that trim piece will allow a mounting location for the lights. So, but in terms of uh, insulation in here, that will give me a roof stated R value uh, just with the foam board of 17.7. Um, uh, and that is including these 45 degree angled parts. It's almost kind of like a little hat of uh, really thick, good insulation sitting on top of the camper. Uh, the walls, uh, I'm going to use two and a half inches of EPS. And as you guys can see up here, um, uh, this is, they don't make, well, at least they don't sell. I don't know if they make two and a half or not, but they certainly don't sell it where I'm at if they do. So I actually bought a half inch piece of EPS and bonded it to the uh, two inch piece using that same great stuff adhesive, uh, very strong. Um, and then that. Uh, in not all, but most of, of the internal portions of the camper will be wrapped in the fabric and be inserted into these wall spaces that you see here. Um, it will sit out about a quarter inch proud of uh, the main um, column structures here, which will be exposed to the interior of the camper. Uh, and I think that's fine. There was a, it was a little bit of a design departure from what I usually do. Um, however, I realized that I could add that extra half an inch and that would give me 25% more insulation on the interior walls. Uh, but that the combined R value for the side walls here will be about uh, nine R value. And, uh, and then of course the floor and the horizontal wing portions, as you guys saw in that initial construction and the cab over floor is all insulated. So, so this camper, the sucker should be, uh, should do pretty well in uh, all kinds of different weather, especially in consideration that uh, its size. Um, you know, I admit I'd spent so much time on the outside in the last couple of weeks getting it sanded down and applying finish, but I kind of forgot how much I like the interior. It's, it's, uh, I hope this video is capturing it, but it just, this camper by and large is not really dimensionally that big but on the inside it you know has nice head height uh, i will be taking away some of that with with the insulation but i do think the insulation is important um it's it's nice and wide i mean i could stand in here and and yeah i could stand in here and spread my arms out um and it just looks very open especially the cab over looks nice and open um i mean it'll feel probably a little bit more closed up in here once oops sorry about that once i get uh you know everything in place but uh but then it, it but at the same time it's not too big right it's not it doesn't feel like this massive space that you've got a heater cool um I, I i'm really liking this i think this this size right here uh may turn out to be just just the nice sweet spot um but anyways so we talked about the insulation on the roof and some of the trim pieces i'm gonna put up there uh this is a re uh, the reverse k structural supports here um that I incorporated when I made the framing. These are an inch deep, so this is just a an inch thick uh, XPS. Um, what I will do is I'll have an inch and a half piece of EPS, which will be covered in the fabric, and will fit in that cavity and cover this up. So if you're on the inside looking, you will never know that there's that uh, structural piece there. Um, but uh, you know, this took a little bit of cutting and sizing to get those in there. So of course, I went ahead and just knocked that out while I was in the process. I was cutting some XPS for something else. I figured I might as well go ahead and knock out these little bits. Uh, this front wall here, uh, that's XPS insulation in there. And then ultimately this will be sheathed across with uh, cedar boards, uh, kind of a shiplap pattern. And um, up here in the front, uh, same thing. And there'll be some storage back in there. But I went ahead and just added that uh, XPS while I was at it. And then I've started some of the electrical here. So uh, there will be... Uh, a countertop here and cabinet space below here and the solar gen will fit in this or will sit in this area so this is a, a natural location for the uh, uh, fuse box and the terminus of all the wires for the various things in here i uh, went ahead and did the there's insulation i put in there and then i just cut out this uh, piece of quarter inch ply here to 
function as a nice mounting location for the um, fuse box coupled with the fact that the solar will come through here and I'll, I'll probably add a uh, breaker so I can uh, for some circuit protection but also so I can turn them on and off if I want to a lot of those uh, <clears throat> electrical breakers that you buy now you can uh, you can push uh, there's a little button on there to where you can manually deactivate or um, disengage it I guess you would say um, and and for me they kind of it functions kind of like a nice little switch so I, I'll uh, use that as a little mounting surface and if there's anything else but uh, but anyway so we got the fuse box here that's just a blue C1 I believe and uh, and I don't have all the wiring done but you could see uh, uh, this will pop out here it comes through this comes up here goes through here so we're gonna have so I've got two wires coming up in here this is not necessarily instructional on how to do wiring but I'm just kind of laying out what I did here. Um, uh, so I will have a central LED light right here. Uh, so that, that's going to be centered in this area. Um, and then that right there is a little pigtail for the vent fan, which as you guys can see is right there. I was originally going to put the vent fan there, but decided to move it over and center it a little bit more. But it is still off center to one side of the camper. But I think that will work out well because that will be right in the center of the doorway, which is also offset. So, but anyway, so we uh, got the wires coming up there. Oops, sorry. We've got the wires coming up here for the vent fan and the, the single LED light that's going to be here. Uh, I added in a common ground and hot wire uh, for other LED lights that will be on the same circuit. So um, for this beam right here, we'll have two LED lights right there. Um, I don't have them in yet, but I will tie off another two that will go center, center there. So there'll be two here. And, uh, and then um, there will be another single LED right there. So the interior LED lights will have a total of six. So one in the front, one in the back, and four here in the center area, which will illuminate primarily kind of this uh, uh, you know, I guess living space, I guess you would say. Uh, I am going to run power in a couple of the places. So that front area there will be capped off with the cedar planks and I'll have some access doors, but that will ultimately be storage in there. I'm trying to think of a, I, I did run some power up there. Uh, well, actually I, that's the common negative, um, but I, I'll, I will ultimately run some power up there and I'll probably add in a light or two that way when you get inside that storage if it's dark out or dark um you know you'll be able to see a little better in there i don't know i'll play my ear my uh point there but i i always try to run even if i don't ultimately use it uh because most of the wires are going to be kind of permanently hidden and it's not going to be real practical to get to them i do try to run power in a few extra places in the camper and then if i don't use it i just uh you know, I, I, you know, you don't have to tie it into the fuse box or anything, but, uh, anyways, but that's what that wire is up there. Um, I will, I will run some power down here. Uh, I think I'm going to put like a little, actually, no correction. I'm sorry. Uh, I will run power over to this side and I will put in a little cigarette lighter, um, a little cigarette lighter insert, um, and some USB plugs if you, you know, you want to charge your phone or something. I've been using an electric blanket. I found a DC electric blanket that I use sometimes. Um, and they don't really use that much uh, amperage or uh, that much wattage. And uh, I, I think they really work well. So that's why I want that cigarette lighter there. In case I use it, I can just plug that bad boy in. And then uh, the fridge will be over here, so I'll have to run power across here. Uh, there's a lot more I got to do in the electrical system. I also uh, will set up the uh, running lights um, and the brake lights here back here in the rear. And as, as I talked about in the, uh, in the last review video, I'll, I'll uh, run the wiring so we can tie it into the backup camera. Uh, that will be a, a whole separate circuit from the wiring that I'm working on now, but that will uh, come down there. It'll, it'll pop through the bottom of there, and then uh, when this is on the truck, I'll be able to plug it into the uh, trailer, a uh, little trailer electrical four-pin plug there. Um, let's see, what else do we got going on? So yeah, that's that's it in a nutshell. I'm just kind of tinkering away, knocking this out. Uh you know, obviously, uh, before I get the rest of the insulation, particularly on the roof in there, it's important I get the electrical done. 
and uh, we'll go from there. So I'll catch up in a couple days, guys. Thanks.